can you go into depth on what a factoring company is? Yes. So in, in layman's terms, like you said, breaking it all the way down, a factoring company buys your invoices. OK, they do that for a percentage. So you're a truck driver. You're out on the road. You're going to have lots of expenses, insurance, fuel. You want to get paid quickly. So what a factory company will do is they will buy an invoice from a freight broker, the person that you haul that load for, and that they will pay you right away. And they take a percentage of your earnings in order to do that, to basically advance you that money. So um, we, we always laugh and joke when we say we get paid every day. And trucking, you do. I mean, even on the brokering side, if you use factoring, um, we can get paid every single day. Every time a load is delivered and we submit that paperwork to the factoring company, we can get paid. So that's what factoring is. And back in the day when we started in trucking, we it was highly frowned upon. We, we didn't, you know, there's contracts. So even in the course that we teach, we talk about factoring and we talk about companies to stay away from because some of them will lock you in these contracts and you can't get out ever. You know, um, some people will actually build their trucking companies to the point where they don't they no longer need factoring, but they have a hard time getting out of a contract. So um, factoring can be good if you're with the right company, a company that actually cares about the carrier versus just taking advantage. What is the percentage that the factoring companies typically work off? And um, Sam, I'm not sure if you're back, but if you are back, this question is to you. I am. Sorry, I, I work a full-time job, too. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So, <laughs> I'm done now, though. It was like my supervisor was writing me, so I had to respond. Um, so, I mean, honestly, I think the highest I've seen is like 3% for factoring, and I think the lowest I've seen is like 1.5. What did you about to say, Tristan? It's, it's 5 for sure, because I had some carry. Some oh, yeah, 5, yeah, because of the reserve. You're right. Five, five, I'm on the checking five. side. Yeah. Sorry, on, on I was the, on the trucking I, side, not the broker. I'm sorry. Well, I've seen it on the trucking side, but the more units you have, and, and especially if you've been yeah. in the business, you can negotiate that rate with the factoring company. Because again, that, that's your money that they're getting that fee from. So you always want to try and negotiate. I know when we first got in with factoring, I think we were paying like 4%. And another carrier was like, that's way too much. You know, at that time, we had one truck. So as we built, we're like, nah, we need to get down to like 1%, 1.5%, something really, really low. Because you're making more money with multiple units. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can get it down as low as 1%? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Really? I mean, especially how much money that, like she said, you're bringing in a month. I mean, if you're bringing in a high revenue, they're definitely going to negotiate with you for the 1%. But I think the highest I've seen, like she said, is 5%. Because what they do, they take out a reserve. So they hold so much money until the shipper actually pays them and then they release it. But again, that can all be negotiated, especially, like I said, if you have a consistent customer and consistent invoices. Okay, as brokers. Which a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that either. A, a lot of people don't know what exactly, I'm sorry. That, that you can negotiate the rate. They think that whatever that, that factoring company is giving you, like that's it, and you can definitely negotiate anything. Understood. As brokers, what is a typical percent that you're working on? Woo. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can be vague uh, you know give me an industry say, standard no, I don't kidding. have to say what you're, you're yeah. working correctly just give me an industry standard it's about well, 15% <laughs> 15% is like 15% for but, but I, I really want to make something clear Sean if that's okay please our focus again is to get the carrier what they need for that truck right so if I'm yeah. getting ready to work on a particular lane, I'm calling all my carrier friends. I'm even looking at my own numbers. If I was to send my truck there, what would it take for me to move that load, right? So in my carrier network, I have lots of carriers, some with fleets of 100, 200 trucks. I'm calling those guys and I need to know what it takes for them to move it. But I also need to know what my small carriers like myself, what do you need to move it? When I'm going to the shipper, I am going to get the carrier the rate that they need. And then I'm adding my 15 to 20%. So let's just be very clear. If I'm making 20% for, 
That's really my business. If I got that carry of what they need, I'm perfectly fine with making 5% on a load. If I know that I need to make sure this carrier gets what they need to move that load. I, I have actually fired shippers. Like I no longer want to work with you because your rates are way too cheap. I don't even feel comfortable asking a carrier to touch that load for that price if they would not negotiate. So industry standard is 15%. But again, as a broker and as a carrier first, I don't even feel comfortable taking 15% if the truck didn't get what they need. That's just that. Absolutely. Yep. I'm here. Okay. Explain to me, and this might be off the beaten trail, but again, this is your world, not mine. Dispatching. What exactly is that? Sam, you want me to well, Tristan, go ahead, because I'll say, yeah, because you have the dispatching service. Right? Okay, so when you dispatch, you actually represent the carrier. That means you can have your own dispatch service, and you can represent multiple carriers, or let's just say you have Power Moves Trucking, right? And you're like, listen, I got a, multiple businesses. I'm a busy guy. I want to invest in trucking and have these five trucks, but I don't have time to dispatch. Then you can hire an independent dispatcher to either work for you, well, an independent dispatch service, or you can hire a dispatcher specifically for your company. Their job is to keep your trucks running. That means they're gonna be on the low boards, they're gonna be um, making, building relationships with carriers, they're, I'm sorry, with brokers and shippers to make sure that your particular trucks stay moving. So that's the role of a dispatcher. The broker's job is to really, we, we work directly with the shipper. Our job is to make sure that the shippers freight gets moved by by those carriers so i mean i operate in both capacities because we we have our own trucks so we dispatch for our own trucks and then we have a dispatch firm where we dispatch for other trucks as well got you before i move the interview on i just want to make make certain that that we're you know i'm asking the right questions for anybody who is looking in in terms of being a broker i am the middleman I'm working with the shipper, I'm working with the carrier, I'm making sure the freight gets moved. But if something happens to that truck, if it catches a flat tire, if the engine goes out, if any of that, that is not my responsibility. Yes, it's my responsibility because I'm sure the shipper's gonna be pissed and they're looking at Sean. But in terms of those costs that are associated with that truck sitting on the side of the road, that does not hit my pocket, correct? Correct. That, that is, is all correct. on the carrier. That is the full carrier's responsibility. Like I said, and that's why I kind of said it before. It's just our responsibility that we're honest with the shipper. So if a delivery is going to be late, you just want to make sure that you're letting your shipper know, hey, you know, the carrier had issues with the truck. It was broke down or whatever the case may have been. But we're doing what we can to, you know, get that freight move. Now, a good broker, which I've done several times, even with my own truck, as far as because I've, I've actually brokered out loads to my own truck so i kind of got to like double this mm -hmm. and you know if there is a truck and i've been working with the same owner operator and it's all about building the relationship i don't have a problem helping that truck find you know a repair shop or having someone come out to them yeah they're going to pay for that expense but if they're an owner operator which means they're just one truck one man you know i'm like let me see what i can do to help you so we can try to, you know, hurry up and get that truck fixed so that way you can get that load delivered. Got you. From a shipper standpoint, what are their basic needs? To get their freight moved. Is, is it that simple? <laughs> it is. That is. The basic needs of a shipper. I mean, they want their freight moved and they want it there on time. I mean, you know, yep, someone probably purchase these products from them and we move all types of stuff. So there's a, a deadline. You're talking about food that needs, needs to be stocked on the shelves of grocery stores. Mm -hmm. You're talking about these large construction jobs and projects. Like it, it, a lot of such stuff is time sensitive. Um, it, it's things, pe things that people need, the things that we use and consume daily, you know, you don't want to go to the grocery store and find out they're completely out of chicken, right? So we, we rely on these truckers to get it done. And as a broker, we have to understand that as well. Like we, we need to understand carrier laws. Like we need to know hours of service because I can't just tell a truck that's already been on the road for, for 10 hours to turn right back around and go pick up another load and he hasn't even done a reset. So 
yeah, for a shipper, they want their stuff moved and they want it done on time, but we don't just get on a load board and post a load. Like we have to understand really what is it going to take to get this load picked up at this time and get it delivered, you know, at that time. Okay, that's a great segue into mm -hmm. where I want to go. There are a lot of legalities, there are laws that you guys must adhere to, that your drivers must adhere to. Can you speak to me about some of them? You just mentioned about the, the drivers can't be on the road, but for so many hours. How many hours is that? And also, are there any other, I'm sure there are, are, are thousands of laws out there, but are there any other key laws that we should know about that you guys must adhere to before telling a shipper, yes, I can get a freight from Pennsylvania to Los Angeles, California within the next two days? Sam or myself? Um, Sam, let's go with you. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, one of the things uh, of a law of a freight broker, I mean, we always have to make sure that we're working with a authorized carrier. So you just can't call up, you know, any carrier that has a trust. You have to have to you have to make sure that their authority matches yours. They're going to have a common carrier um, MC authority. We have the um, broker of property authority. They have to have insurance. So um, I think the legal insurance, the minimum is like seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. They like she said before, they have to have the hours of service. So legally, they have to be able to pick up that load and deliver it. So it's up to the broker's job. And that's the thing, like the shippers. They don't really concern themselves as, as much as what we have to concern ourselves with as far as with the carrier. So if a shipper, like Tristan said, if the shipper says, hey, I need something picked up today and delivered tomorrow, um, you know, as a freight broker, yeah, I'm not driving that truck, but I still have to understand that legally that carrier cannot do that. We need to reschedule that appointment. Like she said, it is a lot of time sensitive um, commodity, especially on our trailers. I do a lot of dairy. I do a lot of frozen items. But the way that the delivery should pick up and, and, and deliver it's, 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 um, it's safe. You know what I mean? We, we know that the produce is going to be safe on there. We have, so we have a temper control reefer Our carriers constantly, um, check it. Sometimes there's like a tattletale on there that can actually keep track of the temperature. But again, like I said, as a freight broker, you have to be able to tell that shipper, I can't legally send a carrier in one day to cover say a thousand miles. Legally, they can't do that. Um, but, or know, tell else, you um, right and make them pay for that because I've gotten that yes. where they need something there so quickly and they're like give me a truck just tell them do it I'll throw in a couple dollars extra dollars like no yes. that's, we need a team to do that and it's not just going to be a couple extra dollars this is what it's going to cost you if you want that yes. to happen you know and, and it's nothing wrong with a broker emphasizing safety to a customer you know a lot of those customers have never been in a truck they just know they need a truck to come and get their stuff and take it to where it needs to go. So just like Sam was saying before, we check several things. We even check safety scores to make sure we're picking the right carrier to move that, that free. Legally. And legally as a broker, oh, I'm sorry, I was going to say, but legally as a broker, you can't ask a carrier either. I've actually been, um, I've actually had, had been asked to like, you know, push a load through. They was going to pay me more money. That was from a broker side. To my trucking and I was like no I was like legally because if I get pulled into a way station I'm going down not you so it's just like even as a freight broker like I said you have to know how to manage that if you're if your shipper does want something picked up today and delivered tomorrow then like Tristan said then you need to put a team on there you need to have two people in that truck at the same time to, to accomplish that goal before we move on legally how long can a carrier stay on the road before they have to pull over and get sleep Tristan? So you have, you can drive, um, I'm sorry, they need, you have a 14 hour work day, they can drive 11 hours, and then they have to take a reset, uh, they have to take a break. So if they don't, don't, I'm sorry, if they don't do that, they're in violation, um, the points are pretty heavy, they can get shut down, um, with your load, DOT does not care. They don't care at all. If that load is on the truck and it needs to get where it needs to be, but that driver is in violation of those hours, they get shut down. And so now you have a problem, which goes right back to checking the safety score, asking the driver, do you have enough hours to get this load moved? Because they may not, you know. I mean, they will sometimes carriers, and 
they will tell you like, yeah, I can get it done. We, we have enough hours and they really don't have fresh hours. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.